very good morning to everyone. Thank you so much for availing yourselves and joining us uh, on this our meeting, which has to do, of course, with communication and the Senate towards October 2024, uh, second session of the 16th Ordinary General Assembly of the Senate of Bishops. My name is Shayla, and I'll be your uh, moderator for today. Our translator is Odette, but she's having a bit of difficulties connecting. We'll see how it goes as we proceed. In the meantime, we will be doing this in English. Please bear with us. So I would like to ask now Sister Dominica to please uh, give us a uh, opening prayer. Sister Dominica, of course, is the Associate Secretary General of the Southern African Catholic Bishops Conference. Thank you, Sheila. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Holy God. Amen. Holy Immortal One, Holy Triune God, we come before you today consecrating this space and time of meeting on this special day of the solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The meeting pertaining communication matters, an important vehicle for life in general, and most importantly, a vehicle for spreading good news around and to the furthest bounds of the earth. We place ourselves before you asking for your guidance, wisdom, inspiration, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion, allow us to grow closer as a group, and nurture the bonds of community in the spirit of synodality through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Well, thank you very much once again. Just a few words uh, with regards to this meeting. We convened this meeting mainly because of the synodon synodality and the role of communications. If you recall, in August 2023, the Francis told a group of journalists that they should foster the culture of encounter and not of confrontation, the culture of peace and not of war, the culture of openness to the other and not of prejudice. In that same meeting, Pope Francis asked the masters of journalism for, to help to tell the synod, synodal process for what it really is, leaving behind the logic of slogans and prepackaged stories. I'd like now to welcome the Secretary General of the Symposium of Episcopal Conferences of African Mother, Madagascar, Father Raphael Sibini. Just give us a few words. Father Raphael, welcome. Thank you. I think you you managed to listen to me. Yeah. Thank you. Your Excellencies, dear brothers and sisters, very warm welcome and greetings from the Second Secretariat. On behalf of the Second President, His Eminence, Fridolin Cardinal. Mongo. I would like to express my gratitude to all of you in two ways. The first is a gratitude of the church family of God in Africa and the silence to you for your hard work, which is very important tool for the good and growth of the church in our continent. The second one is the, your presence and participation in this webinar, which will focus on synodality and communication, a crucial and pertinent topic in the present day of our church. Synodality is about working together 
as the church of Jesus Christ. In this journey together, all of us try to listen to Jesus, death and reason, who continues to speak us today through his spirit, showing us where to go. So there are here two dimensions of the synodality, which I wish to underline. The first one is mission. Synodality is essentially oriented toward us mission. And the church's mission is to evangelize. The second one is participation. Synodality means the commitment and participation of the old people of God in the mission of the church. For this conviction, I would like to draw out three considerations which constitute However, we lost Father Rafael Simbini addressing us all the way from Tanzania, but we thank him for his time here with us. Without wasting any more time, we move on now to Archbishop Dabulan Paco uh, with his keynote address. As you know, he is the Archbishop of Pretoria, as well as the, vice, the first Vice President of the SECBC and SECBC Senate Delegate. Hello. Hello, Father Raphael. You are back. Welcome back. Oh, no, no. Uh, my, I am in the in the land of yours, Nyerere. My my connection went went out. Now it's possible to hear me. Yes, we are able what to. I... And Archbishop Paco was about to start his presentation, but okay. if you still have a few words to say, I'm sure we can listen to your. Remarks. Okay. Yeah. May I? Yes, you may. Okay, so I was to share with you three considerations, starting from the two, uh, two very big words from synodality, mission and participation. So I was saying the first one that I want to share with you is to walk with the church. Synodality is an invitation to you to man and woman of communication, to be an integral part of this working together that the church is experiencing since 2021. Please don't limit yourself to speak about what is happening in the church, but allow yourself to be part of this tomar parte deste processo de sinodalidade. Experiências e o trabalharmos juntos, isto é tudo participação na missão evangelizadora da Igreja. Usar as nossas habilidades como comunicadores para evangelizar. Homens e mulheres batizados. Of Jesus Christ, wherever you find yourself. The second thing is to walk for the growth of the church in Africa. One of the great teachings of the synodal path is communion. Pope Francis repeated many times that working together we are capable of growing things. And the African proverb says, unity is a strength. So my dear brothers and sisters, you have been working hard, even though our communication as church in Africa and this island is still weak. Something is missing and that is working and working together. If we continue to do things 
each one, each in our own path, we will remain weak and last in the global sphere. Therefore, I salute this initiative to gather as a region, as in Biza, and to plan and discuss matters of concern of your entire region. Please, try to motivate other region to do so, and to closely work with CEPAX, the second committee for communication. And the last consideration, protect the image of the church. We are living in time that is hostile to the church. Evil forces are seeking to destroy the church and the pastors using the media. Make a difference. Don't allow yourself to be influenced by such a media. You are the apostle of Jesus. Use your communication tools to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Protect the church and our ministers. Once again, thank you for attending this meeting. Thank you for having invited me to, to greet you. I wish you a great and fruitful meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Father Raphael, for those words. And uh, thank you for being here, making time, and uh, addressing us. We now go back to Archbishop Paco, as uh, he has already been introduced. So, Archbishop Paco, once again, the floor is yours. You may go ahead. Well, okay. It seems the screen sharing is not working. That's fine. So, good morning to all of you. Um, the brief given to me uh, in this presentation is a reflection on the Synod journey from October 2023 up to now. That's the first part. And the second part is insights from the Southern African Catholic Bishop Synthesis Report. So that's what I'm going to be addressing you all. So the first part is reflection on the Synod journey, especially since the last Synod assembly in Rome, which I attended. As an active, an active participant in the Synod on Synodality, especially in my capacity as the delegate for the SACBC in the Synod Assembly, I have personally been on a Synod journey myself, especially since participating in the Synod Assembly in October. Similarly, the church in Southern Africa has been on a similar journey, Synod journey. And so I'm going to be sharing with you my own journey, first of all, and secondly, to share with you some of the developments in the SACBC area. My personal insights really are that my continued engagement and reflection on the Synod process, including reading of some relevant material, has brought me to a clearer and deeper appreciation and understanding of what this process involves. And I'd like to share with you just three insights that have come to my mind. First of all, it seems to me that what is at stake here, most fundamentally, is a call to a radical shift in our model of church. And when I've been able to see things in that way, that has enabled me to participate more effectively in the 
uh, synod and synodality process. What is fundamental at stake in this process, and not so much discussing this or that thing, introducing this or that new method of doing this or that, introducing this or that strategy, important as those things are, but what is more important is a transition from one way of understanding who we are as church to a new one. Pope Francis in firmly setting the whole Catholic Church on a path to rediscover and to reappropriate the synodal nature of the Church has declared that it is this path of synodality which God expects of the Church in the third millennium. And in reflecting on this clarion call by the Holy Father, I have come to the realization that what is really being called for is a radical shift that fundamentally involves moving from one model of church to another. Concretely speaking, this calls for a transition from the model of church that became dominant in the second millennium to one in the third millennium centered on synodality. The church of the second millennium which gained traction, especially from the high Middle Ages, was a church which was understood as a hierarchical and clerical institution in which there was a clear division between the teaching church made up of the clergy and the receiving church made up of the lay faithful. It is a church that began with and centered the hierarchy and the clergy, and in a way, for many people, the church came to be seen as identified with the clergy. So that is the church that uh, gained traction and subsequently became entrenched in the second millennium. And that is the church that many of us would have grown up in. But also that church, in terms of its uh, theological method, it was more deductive in its approach, beginning with um, theological definitions in the form of dogmas and doctrines that then had to be explained, defended, and therefore it tended to have an apologetic approach. Now, <clears throat> we are being, I think, called to a new model of church, which by the way is the oldest model of church, where church is understood first and foremost as people of God, who by virtue of a common baptism are made members of the church with equal dignity and who share equally in core responsibility for the life and mission of the church. And that is the ecclesiology put forward by the Second Vatican Council. And in a way, it uh, inverts, if you like, the pyramid of the previous uh, church model, where the Pope, the clergy were up there and all the lay faithful at the bottom. It inverts, inverts that pyramid and puts the faithful on top. And then the hierarchy is uh, put in the center of that. And also the theological model in the church that is being uh, put forward to us, the model of church, is more inductive. One that, you know, is about journeying together towards the fullness of the kingdom. And we discern the signs of the times and we ask ourselves, what is the Spirit telling us as we move forward? So it is a, an inductive method that is open to, to, to change, to growth. And it seems to me that is the most fundamental um, uh, meaning of this process of the synod on synodality, that we are asked to migrate, move from that old, uh, uh, model of church, a new model of church. And that in a way um, 
you know, helped me also to begin to appreciate and understand where the resistance that we see in certain circles within the church is coming from. This is nothing short of a paradigm shift from one worldview to a different worldview as far as the church is concerned. So that's the first thing I want to share, and I find it helpful myself when I situate this whole process within that bigger context of understanding what uh, fundamental is going on. And secondly, the thing I would like to share with you is that um, I've come to the realization that synodality has implications and applications that reach beyond church life. Synodality, as you know, is a concept historically found and used in church terminology, a concept that has gained momentousness in the Catholic Church in the context of the current synod and synodality. But even though historically it has been associated with the church, I have concluded that it presents a vision that has implications and applications which reach far beyond the confines of church life. When properly understood and consciously appropriated, synodality has the potential of promoting and fostering right relating interpersonally between and among groupings of different kinds, as well as internationally contributing to a global culture of peaceful coexistence premised on the upholding of the common good of all. Synodality has ecumenical implications. It is a common challenge that concerns all believers in Christ. Synodality and ecumenism are two parts to work together with a common goal, namely, a better Christian witness by all of us Christians. Synodality also has implications for the promotion of the common good. If you like, synodality has implications for socio-political life, even economic life. As a call to service, the church's synodal life presents itself as service in the promotion of social, economic, and political life of all peoples under the banner of justice, solidarity, and peace. In South Africa at the moment, we are seized with forging a system of governance following the failure by any political party to win majority. So people talk about um, the coalition system of governance, the government of national unity. What if we were to think of a synodal system of governance that is premised on listening, mutual listening, premised on pursuing the common good of all, and maybe we as church, if we were to really live out this synodality, that could be a contribution we make even to the society around, that we begin to dream of a political system that could be based on synodal uh, values. And lastly, I think this whole process of the synod on synodality present a call to conversion. Because as I said, it's a radical transformation really from one model of church to another. And therefore what becomes clear is that there has to be conversion all around on the part of all of us. Personal conversion, institutional conversion, pastoral conversion, as we try to live and uh, operate in ways that are synodal, moving away from that clerical, hierarchical model of church 
to warn that foregrounds and centers uh, uh, the people of God as a whole. And I think this was identified clearly in Addis Ababa, in our African um, continental phase reflection. And we say in that final document that synodality is going to call for conversion. We say this new understanding will necessarily demand the formation of the clergy, consecrated persons and the laity in the practice of synodal leadership. The synodal model needs to be planted in the life of the people of God. Each group must be open to ongoing formation in the synodal way of being church and listen for it, including bishops, clergy, laymen, young laymen and women, young people and consecrated persons. So it seems to me if we are to embark effectively on this process, we must be open to this call to metanoia, to turn around, change of mindset. That's all I need to share with you in terms of my own journey. As I said, the church in the Southern African Catholic Bishops Conference area has also been on a journey. So <clears throat> the brief update really is that Following the October 2023 Synod Assembly, upon return to the country, we gave a report to the Executive Board of the Bishops' Conference in November. And in that meeting also, we planned how we were to give now a fuller report to all the bishops in the plenary session of January 2024. And it was decided not just to give a report, but to give the bishops, in fact, an experience of this synodal uh, way of doing things, particularly to give them an experience of the conversation in the spirit. And thankfully, uh, by the time we met, the reflection question in preparation for the upcoming October 2024 uh, Synod Assembly had come out. So the bishops in doing their conversation in the spirit, in fact, reflected on that question. And they were the first ones to give their input uh, on that question. And um, following that, then consultations were carried out in the different dioceses. And we had given ourselves the deadline of the 30th of April for each diocese to submit to the Secretariat, uh, their report, and that was done by most of the dioceses. And we were able to send to Rome on the 15th of May uh, the synthesis report of the whole SACBC. Now, highlights from this synthesis report, it's a longish report, so just a few highlights. I think what came out clearly there is the emphasis on the need for formation on all levels, formation in the synodal way of being and acting. It was even suggested that maybe in order to facilitate that, we might need to uh, have our own pastoral institute again, where people can actually be trained in synodal ways of being and acting. In terms of structures and ministries, the general feeling was not to establish new ones, but rather to make the existing ones operate in a more synodal way. There are already a plethora of structures that exist, small Christian communities, laity associations, sodalities, um, and other structures. And it was felt that it's a question more really of making those structures operate in a synodal way where there is listening to one another, where there is participation by all in the discernment processes and decision-making processes in those structures. There was acknowledgement of the need for conversion again to synodal ways of being and acting, particularly the dismantling of clerical attitudes and habits that, became, that came out very strongly. 
Now, lastly, some pointed issues that came out, the need for the revision of canon law to allow the empowerment of the laity. And maybe the possibility of making a distinction between ordination to orders and jurisdiction or leadership, that the two do not necessarily need to always go together. And when that distinction is made, therefore you could imagine the possibility of lay people also, you know, taking up some of the leadership roles that are given only to ordained ministers. And, you know, some even suggested that maybe, you know, one way would be to change canon law in such a way that in the College of Consultants of the Bishop, you can have laity, religious, women, we have priests already, and even permanent deacons. There was also, you know, emphasis on enhancing the role of women in church life, and also in our context, encouraging the involvement of men because for the most part in many of our parishes, you'll find that it is women really are in the majority. The men, some of them do not really participate in church life. And I think that would be really what I would have picked up as highlights. One challenge I think that still remains for us is um, that more work still needs to be done to bring our priests on board with the synod and synodality process. Some of us in uh, respective dioceses have tried to do that. I'm not sure how you know, many dioceses have been able to call meetings for priests to try and get them on board, but it seems to me that continues to be a challenge that faces us. That is the long and the short of what I prepared to share with you uh, this morning. Thank you very much, Archbishop Barco. Thank you so much for those words. We now move over to our panelists, and we have two guest speakers. The first one is the Auxiliary Bishop of Beira, Archdiocese in Mozambique. That is Bishop Antonio Constantino. And he will be talking about the mission of digital media in the African Catholic Church and Synodality. And that will be followed by a presentation from Natasha uh, Govica, the Director of the Theological Pastoral Department of the Dicastry for Communication in the Vatican. And she will be talking about the role of Catholic communicators, journalists in promoting the Synod. But for now, let's welcome Bishop Antonio. You have 10 minutes. Uh, remember that we're running a bit late on time, so let's stick to our 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are you hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. Start? Yeah. Ok. Então eu vou falar em português para também para ajudar aqueles que não percebem o inglês, já que estamos nesse contexto. Então, uh, o meu tema, primeiro... My topic, once again, thank you and good morning or good afternoon as we are gathered here together for this reflection. As Ms. Sheila was saying, my theme is mission of digital media in the African Catholic Church and Synodality. In a contemporary context, the digital revolution has profoundly transformed all spheres of life. It's not being rich or poor, but it's a fact, and the Catholic Church is no exception. In Africa, where the church is growing, digital media emerges as a vital tool for education, communication, promotion of social justice. However, in addition to these functions, digital media also plays a critical role in promoting synodality, a central concept to church teaching. We'd like to 
I'd like to look for the intersection between digital media and synodality, highlighting those tools that we can use to reinforce unity and participation and how they are shaping our faith and community. The mission of digital media in African Catholic Church is becoming relevant, especially in a context of synodality, emphasizes communion, participation, and mission of all its members. It is a process by which the church walks together, all members seeking to discern the will of God. What are the roles of digital media in African Catholic Church? First, communication and evangelization. They offer us a powerful platform for communication and evangelization through blogs, websites, apps. The church can also have a wider reach, especially our young people who use these technologies. This allows for the dissemination of religious messages, doctrine, teaching, in a more efficient manner. Then we have education and formation. They are important tools for education, for cont uh, continuous formation, webinars, online courses, e-learning, videos, educational videos, these all can help deepen understanding the church's teaching and in the formation of lay people. I mean, we have evangelization and catechism. These have always been pillars of the mission of the church. And in Africa, that's very important. With the advent of digital media, this mission has also taken on new dimensions. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram allow the church to reach a more diverse audience. Live broadcasts of mass, daily reflections, catechetical videos and messages can be easily accessed in urban and rural areas. But that is very important whether it's urban or rural areas. Then we have uh, formation and education, inclusive education. Catholic institutions in Africa use these tools to offer courses to a wider audience, irrespective of their geographic situation. This includes diverse voices and collaboration. This, we are an example, some from Rome, I'm from Mozambique, some are in South Africa. Then we have participation and inclusion, active forms of this. Digital media can facilitate participation through online forums, polls, consultations, allowing the faithful to give their opinion. And this contributes also to decision-making in the church. This, we can see, is happening. Transparency and accountability. Digital media can promote transparency in church activities, such as uh, publication of financial reports, projects, allowing for accountability and community. Pastoral care and spiritual accompaniment through video conferences, messaging, social media. Pastoral workers can offer ongoing spiritual counseling and support. As we've spoken, synodality comes from the Greek word synodus, which means walk together. 
emphasizes collaboration and inclusivity, participation of all members in the church, clergy, religious, lay people. Pope Francis has highlighted or underlined the importance of synodality as a way of being the church in today's world, such as our uh, as Bishop Dabula said this morning. We are still far from that, but it is a journey we need to do together. Digital mediums give us a dynamic way to do so. As we said, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. The church can reach a way of being interactive, diverse, and reach a greater audience. Social networks not only allow dissemination of partial message, but also open spaces and here I underline spaces for dialogue and listening, as we are doing now in this forum. Synodality focusing on walking together is strengthened by the use of digital media in these various ways. Speaking of listening and dialogue, these platforms can facilitate listening and dialogue, allowing the voices of diverse groups to be heard, including those who are more geographically distant. We are seeing this at regional level, such as in Giza, and also at diocesan level. We have far-lying communities, and through the access to the internet, we can reach these areas. We can also listen to the concerns that they have. We also have decentralization of information, this fosters a sense of unity and collaboration between different dioceses and parish small communities. We have innovation and adaptation. It allows the church to adapt to new circumstances and to the needs of the faithful. Promoting innovation that is better adapted to the contemporary context. We can't do things in the traditional way. Then we have mission in this in digital environment. In the synthesis report number 17, it tells us how we can use this digital environment for mission. Digital culture in it represents a fundamental change in the way we see the reality and in how we relate to ourselves, to one another, to our surroundings, and to end with God. Missionaries have always gone with Christ to new frontiers, with, while the Holy Spirit pushed and preceded them. It's up to us to reach today's culture in all spaces where they find themselves, including the space they use, their cell phones and tablets. There are challenges and opportunities here. Despite the advantage, there are the challenges, such as adequate formation of both clergy and lay people, the management of screen time, and that the messages are faithful to the teachings of the church. Internet accessibility is still expensive and an issue in some regions of Africa, in some rural areas, infrastructure is poor and limits the reach of online initiatives. Our traditional ways of evangelization are still valid, 
we can't just use the new, but our traditional ways are still valid. So I wouldn't ignore those ways. But we need to work towards a new hybrid evangelization. We need to look at this digital form. From being an influencer to a real witness and follower of Jesus. That's the message that Pope Francis gave us last year on the World Communication Day. He says we mustn't be mere influencers, but be witnesses of our experience of faith. I'd just like to highlight a few important aspects. Every Christian should be aware of their potential influence. Doesn't matter how many followers they have. Our presence in social media should be on spreading information, ideas, teachings, thoughts, reflections. But we also need to be conscious of not to fall under the influence of fake news, erroneous messaging. To be a follower of Christ, it is to manifest the glory of God. It's not our success, human success, but it is the gospel. We shouldn't be looking at ourselves, but rather on spreading the gospel. Christian living is a vocation, and it should be consume our very existence. We should offer ourselves becoming a form of communication of God's love. So it's not about how many followers I have. It's about transmitting the message of Christ. I would like to conclude saying that as the church navigates this area, the integration of media continues to be a vital force, one for renewal and growth of the Catholic Church in Africa. Not only connects the faithful, but inspires them to live and share the gospel in a more significant and meaningful manner. The mission of digital media in the Catholic Church, it's a rich opportunity to strengthen communion, broaden participation, and fulfill the mission of evangelization. The church can walk with its members, answer the challenges and opportunities of the world. I end with the African proverb, the river is filled by small streams. I thank you. I also had problems with the linking and my connection earlier on, but I hope you managed to hear me. Thank you. Yes, we did. Thank you so much. Thank you. Muito obrigada, Dom Constantino. Temos ouvido muito bem. Thank you very much once again. We now ask, uh, welcome, brother. We now welcome Natasha. Thank you so much for availing yourself and uh, making us feel a bit jealous with the way you look very relaxed and warm whilst we are all full of coats, feeling <laughs> cold. But welcome. The floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me to this webinar for us here at the Decastry for Communication. It is really very meaningful to be in touch, at least briefly, with the local community. So thank you for having me. So I was asked to say some words about the role of Catholic communicators and journalists in the 
in promoting the synod and I would like to share some key points, at least for me are the key points. First, to remember that uh, this synod, as we all know, is not about a particular topic, but it's about synodality and synodality is a transversal theme that runs through the whole Christian life. We have heard about it in the previous presentations and can help us to make a synthesis, but has also a risk of putting too much on the grill, as we say here in, in Italy. So risk of saying so many things that then we lose the connection among them and thus mortif mortify this occasion that the synod is with overloading it with several and too many messages. Synod is, synodality is, we know, content and method at the same time. What does this mean for us and for our work that we can hardly understand, understand anything about it without making at least a little experience of it. Uh, Archbishop Dabula was speaking before about giving even to the bishops at least a little experience of what conversations in the spirit are all about. So without a at least a little experience, it's difficult to talk about synodality. Mm, for me, it would be like trying to explain the taste of a good dinner <laughs> without actually eating anything. Second, the goal of the synod on synodality is to learn how to walk together. And in order to be able to do this, it's not enough to have just legs that are able to move. It's not even enough to have a head that knows where to go, but we need a healthy organism. The doctors teach us that uh, in order to, to overcome our laziness and the sick body to make it healthier, we need to move, we need to walk. And to set out, out on a walk demands a certain effort and may not please, at least not immediately. So we need to put in it a certain effort and knowing that this is the condition for living as a healthy community, as a healthy church, as a church which goes forth. Uh, St. Paul uses the same image of members and one body to explain this virtuous, virtuous tension uh, that needs to be maintained between the diversity of gifts, ministries on the one hand, and the unity and um, synergy that is in this body. And he also invites us to always remember that the weaker is necessary that uh, we should uh, know surround, uh, surround members that are judged less honorable with more honor and so on. So he invites us actually with this metaphor to act against the worldly mentality, to renounce the logic of power and adopt the gospel logic. Through the synodal process, we are really invited to, to renounce uh, even in communication to this perverse logic, which would like to um, base the unity of a community on the common definition of the enemy. Uh, somebody calls this the common enemy intimacy. This is not Christian. <laughs> common enemy intimacy is not Catholic. Instead, we need to rediscover the unity based on the organic nature of differences or based, in other words, on communion. For us as communicators, this is crucial. It's clear for us that there is no communication without communion. And on the other hand, there is also no communion without communication. I think that we can only bring difference in this media environment that is ever more polarized if we rediscover communication at the service of, of communion. 
and not of the vision. There is another uh, verse that at least I find very helpful from the letter to the Collisions, uh, chapter two, number 19, where Paul speaks about the ligaments or joints in the body. He says the whole body supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews grows as God causes it to grow. So without these uh, ligaments and bonds, the members in the body would actually be disconnected and the body would not be able to move and to act. Without this mutual recognition of each other as a person, as a member of the same body, there can be no synergy in a body. So I sometimes think about this uh, synodal process as kind of a allow me this <laughs> comparison, kind of a fitness center where we all together exercise in order to re rehabilitate these joints or ligaments in, in the body. So first thing that I would like to share is that for me, the promoting the synod for these reasons that I mentioned, promoting the synod cannot be just delivering information about the last uh, church event or about the next assembly and so on. Uh, without the journey before, during and after, we are not narrating the synod, but just another event. And uh, if we are not part of this journey, uh, if we are looking at it as kind of outsiders, outside reporters, uh, we are not uh, doing our job well. Uh, you probably all remember uh, from the last assembly in October to, uh, 2023 that our prefect Paolo Ruffini, who was the president of the Commission for Communication and Information, as well as Sheila here present, uh, who is the vice president, of this commission were both also part of the assembly. So they not only had the information about what was going on uh, in the assembly, but they also had the taste of being part of it. They actively participated in this huge exercise of listening and of trying to discern in common. And I think that each, un, uh, each one of us can do something similar in his or her own environment. I will bring you just two examples that are not from, <laughs> directly from the work of Catholic journalists. But for example, I was told about uh, religious sisters in, uh, sister in Uganda who realized the listening process in uh, several rural parishes for her academic research. So it was an academic research, but actually through this process of listening, of uh, bringing questions and collecting answer, answers, she was actually able to help the local communities to become more aware of their very, very simple and basic needs. Uh, don't laugh, but for example, they became aware that if they want to really gather and celebrate together as community, they need to build toilet services near the church. It's a very practical outcome, but we also as human beings need this. Just a small example. This means for our work, I understand this, uh, our, that our work as communicators is to provide useful questions. It can be useful for the synodal process. Another example is from the sacral world. There is an initiative uh, made by The Guardian. It's called Dining Across the Divide. Uh, and the subtitle is, Can Breaking Bread Together Help Bridge uh, Political Differences? So what do they do? I will put in the chat later the, the link. They connect polarized people and make them have a dinner together. And this is the first step of finding a common ground. This could be another idea to promote the synod, to provide useful occasions also for the church as family of God 
to gather at the same table and share. We don't know, we don't need to wait just to be invited. Uh, we uh, forgive me, um, bishops, excellencies, we don't need to wait just for you as pastors to, to provide this table for us. Each one of us can do his own contribution. We can propose, we can be host and provide such occasions to, to share and to overcome, to bridge the divide. So to conclude, uh, really in a nutshell, I think that we need to experience the common journey in order to tell it well. But on the other hand, narrating, telling this experience of the journey so far help us also to continue to work together and to do it ever better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Natasha, for sharing that with us. And uh, as the Synod says, it's about participation, it's about sharing together. And I believe uh, all our three speakers here have given us a lot of uh, food for thought. Is that how you say, it, Sister Dominica? <laughs> okay. Sister Dominica just smiles. But yes. Thank you so much for all of your inputs. We have a couple of minutes. Uh, if anyone has questions or comments, you may raise your hand and ask the question. The floor is open for questions, for comments. We have until one o'clock to do that. But in the meantime, just to say really thank you so much once again to all our three panelists. And as Bishop Constantino was saying, that you know when you look at the church, the digital era as well, not everyone has access to technology or even to the internet, like the different regions, different uh, difficulties. We saw earlier on, of course, with Father Rafael Sabini trying to connect there all the way from uh, Tanzania and had to be disconnected. That's just one of our realities here in Africa. So when we talk about it, the digital era, we need to also take into consideration and uh, those uh, difficulties or challenges that some of us encounter. And I see Natasha, you have actually put the link in the messages there. So thank you. Anyone who wants uh, the link that Natasha mentioned from The Guardian, it is in the message box. But for now, feel free to ask your questions. Seems like everyone is good on this group. No <laughs> one has a question. Well, uh, that, my question to you uh, goes to Natasha, actually. For those uh, media personnel or Catholic journalists that would like to actually be part of the sex, second section, for example, what, uh, what is the criteria or what are the steps to take in order to be part of those journalists. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, of course uh, you you know that the the, the assembly is uh, already there. Uh, you uh, at least uh, if the if the Pope does not appoint new members to the assembly, the assembly is there is the same as uh, the last year. But uh, you can, of course, be uh, part of everyday briefings. Uh, you know that last year, after everyday work, there was a, at the middle of the day uh, a briefing in the Holy See Press office. And uh, you do not, don't need to be physically in Rome in order to participate to this briefing because the Holy See Press Office has now uh, the possibility to connect through the particular platform and participate from uh, wherever in the world. So my recommendation would be to reach out to the Holy See Press Office, maybe also through Shayla, who of course has a direct contact and uh, to ask and apply for this participation. Thank you very much, Natasha. 
I see Archbishop Zalile has his hand up. You may ask your question, Your Grace. Yeah, hello. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for, for your presentations. Uh, I listened with enthusiasm to everybody. However, my 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 ears, you know, started jumping up and down as Archbishop Dabula was talking about en enhancing the role of women in the life of the church, particularly in the life of the synodal church, and saying that we need to bring on board uh, the priests. Now, I wanted to say on that, you know, I think it starts already at the seminary. The seminarians need to be brought on board in a very strong manner, more especially when it comes to en enhancing the role of women. I just have a little uh, example of what happened Some I'm not going to say the church and where, uh, but I heard that this young priest, you know, uh, who's even young, young, only two years ordained, he has uh, demarcated the sanctuary and saying the women may not uh, step their feet on the sanctuary because it's a it's a sacred place. You know, now in Isizulu, they would say umsamo means it's a sacred place only reserved for men. I mean, uh, today, if somebody says that nowadays or in this year, 2024, where are we really going? So hence I'm saying uh, whatever we're talking about also needs to be brought to the seminarian so that they can learn these things. Uh, there they feed themselves with many other things. And the second point is says bringing the priest on board, you know, we need, I think we need to work hard on that to bring the priest on board of, on the synodal uh, way and the synodality and everything. Yes. You know, so that we can we can be able to sort of what is so that you can be able to know that we are all joining together, not only the people for somebody. Thank you very much. Just that comment. Thank you, thank you so much, Archbishop Solili, for that comment. Indeed, a very important that uh, ongoing formation doesn't only uh, start at post uh, seminary, but within the seminary as well. I see there's a question here from Sister Olga who says, good morning, I'd like to know if the digital synod is still ongoing and how. Perhaps that goes to you, Natasha. Okay, so um, I was uh, not directly involved in the um, uh, digital synod uh, because it's it was an uh, initiative that was mainly accompanied by our secretary, Monsignor Ruiz. Uh, and it was mainly, as far as I am aware of, it was mainly in this first part of the listening process. Uh, of course, uh, the group uh, still gathers, they share, but what is now uh, more at the stake is the task that's, that was given to our dicastery by the General Secret for Synod, uh, which is uh, to coordinate the number three study group that is about the mission in the digital environment. So uh, there is a group uh, of uh, people from different dicasteries, uh, so communication, uh, culture and edu education, and also evangel evangelization, uh, that is now uh, working on this topic and trying to, um, how to say, to do next steps. Uh, meanwhile, um, I don't know if everybody's aware that our dicastery uh, last year also published the ref pastoral reflection on uh, our engagement in the social media. And this is also part of, uh, together, together of course, with the chapter uh, number 17 of the synthesis of last, uh, year's assembly. Uh, all this is material for further discussion and further, um, we are, they are now still uh, trying to find uh, the way to reach out again to all the local churches and collect the reactions on this particular topic. I don't know, I'm not sure if this answers your question, but 
is just to say uh, that yes, things are uh, going on, the reflections are going on, but maybe not in the same way as it was in uh, this initiative of Digital Synod. All right, thank you. Uh, we had Sister Tsepo had a hand up before. I'm not sure if you still want to ask your question, Sister. Sister Tsepo, are you there? Okay, thank you very much. Am I, I'm here. Am I audible? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, mine is uh, it's a comment. Um, I think I'm, I'm grateful. I've been listening to our presenters and I'm impressed, especially when we talk about involvement of women in this sort of synodality that we are talking about. I want to believe and I want to hope that this is all about we putting, but it's us now putting it into action, which I want to believe that is going to help people to take action and people to participate and feel that indeed it is the church that we all need to work together and participate in it. And I'm grateful that um, at least as, as uh, I don't know, the, the previous speaker, uh, Joshua Bailey, I like he said, uh, this is the stuff that he keeps, that okay, we need to start this with seminars, because we are talking about people who are going to lead us, people who are going to be the leaders, Yes. And sometimes they don't ask, or they don't, they don't, they don't see the, the importance of we take action and we change. So I'm very grateful to hear that. And if, if you start with the seminaries, it will help us to help these people, young people, to understand the participation of women in the church. So thank you very much for your attention. I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Sebo. Uh, Vice President, <laughs> better stand up. Go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank all the presenters for their beautiful presentations. Uh, as we embark on this journey, Senator Jane, I would like, just for clarity's sake, who's guiding who in the process? It would be nice to know that because to engage there must be somebody who's guiding you. Question noted. Thank you. Archbishop Dabula, would you like to answer that? Well, um, the Bishop's Conference, of course, was asked now to uh, carry on with the work of the Synod in their respective dioceses. And uh, so it is, you know, at the level of the conference, the bishop's conference that is leading that, at the level of the, each diocese, it is the bishop that is leading that. Um, work has been done, as I said, because we are preparing for the upcoming October 2024 uh, Synod Assembly. And uh, a question was given, We've reflected on that question. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so we'll see then what will transpire at the end of the Synod Assembly. And probably there will be maybe an apostolic exhortation from the Holy Father that tells us, you know, what to do going forward. And then we shall take it from there. Again, it is the, the, the Bishop's Conference and the Bishops that are leading. Uh, but unfortunately, we've not been able to to involve the seminary in our consultations, largely due to the fact that also the time given was very, was very short and the deadlines to be met. But I think that is something important. We must take it on. We can't have seminarians left out. Thank you. Uh, so Tony Rowland, can I hand up? I don't know if she's still here. Okay. So before we conclude, perhaps just one more question to you, Natasha, as in uh, communicators or even Catholic journalists, what can be done between now and October 2024 to promote the synod? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I, 
I'm, I certainly don't have uh, the answer what you can do between now and, uh, and October assembly, uh, because I think that uh, the synodal process is a very long process, <laughs> maybe a hundred year long process. And uh, it's, it's really, I, I think that everything that we can do to spread the message and uh, raise the awareness among the people of God can help. I will give you just uh, a couple of examples, but again, forgive me because these are examples from somebody who is looking at your country and your countries <laughs> from Rome. And I'm not sure if this corresponds to what is your experience, but I was told that uh, in the African continent, uh, the risk can be that people are not even aware about synod the, the synodal process going on. So what we have done, for example, for the um, Vatican radio programs, and, uh, and uh, by the way, I would like to ask you to promote this if you, if you have any uh, possibility to do so in your own uh, communities and through own, uh, your own media. Uh, we, we have prepared, for example, just the podcast uh, with the reflections of Father Timothy uh, from, from the last assembly, because we, we believe that, uh, that, synod that when we uh, speak about synodality in a spiritual way, so in a way that everybody is able to connect with this uh, new term and new new word that was strange for most of us uh, since uh, um, we, we only discovered it maybe a couple of years ago. But if we listen to people who help us to understand what does it mean for me, for my own life as a Christian, for my own spiritual growth, that can maybe help to, to raise awareness and to make us all more open to participate uh, and to follow this process. So this was just one example. We are also doing some interviews, again, about spiritual conversations, just to raise the curiosity and maybe uh, people would like to try to maybe also to ask uh, their pastors, could, could we do the same? Could we have this experience? Could we please uh, uh, have a little bit of this taste of synodality in our own parish, in our own local community, in our own association and uh, whatever. So um, really, I don't, I don't have the answer, just some ideas <laughs> because I'm also searching for ideas <laughs> of what else could we do. Also, please, if you have ideas of what we could do as Vatican media to promote more, tell us. Well, thank you so much, Natasha. I see it's exactly one o'clock. We should be uh, closed by now, but uh, seeing that there were a couple of delays, I'll allow Tony Rowland to ask a question and then we close. Yes, Tony, you can go ahead. You need to unmute. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um. You know, I was very interested to see that there was this this webinar offered um about communication, having been involved in communication in the church as a layperson for more than thirty years in print media, in digital media, in radio, and so on. Um. I think that, you know, I have a great interest in this whole synodality area. And currently, the, in the Southern Cross, there is an article that I've written that I submitted some months ago. And it's in the current issue of the Southern Cross on how we can learn to have better dialogue 
um, bringing synodality into the family. You know, our theme for the church, our image for the church in Africa is church as family. And so for many years, and many people here I think are aware that I worked for some years at the Catholic Bishops' Conference in the family desk, and have been promoting this family focus, began, beginning with an experience in marriage encounter, which in fact led us, my hus late husband and I, into a lot of relationships, working, good working relationships with some of our clergy, some of our bishops, um, but I've also experienced a lot of problems with clericalism in the church. And even just recently, you know, I found it very difficult having worked closely with many priests and bishops over the years to have a priest, you know, be, behave the way they do sometimes, really making life difficult for the laity. <clears throat> so, you know, I've had some, you know, really almost nasty experiences in that field. So I want to endorse Bishop Archbishop Daburo's comments about working with, you know, clericalism and so on. But then picking up on Bishop Zolina, it's not just women. I think couples, families should be taken into consideration when we are promoting synodality. And my belief is that we need to begin to teach synodality in our homes. The conversation in the spirit has really sort of enthused me, has, you know, in fact, that's the article that I wrote, started with a reflection on conversation in the spirit, which is really the form of dialogue that Marriage Encounter was promoting. And so we need to do a lot of work, in my view, on promoting family life, marriage, and um, yeah, I've got a lot to say about that, but you know, I think that's enough for now. Maybe Natasha, um, maybe I can communicate with you <clears throat> a little more, but thank you. It's a long journey. I started in pre-Vatican times, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. So a lot of experience in the church. Thank you, God bless. Thank you, thank you, you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Just just a comment to on this. Uh, actually, I think that uh, that you have the privilege of having already this uh, focus on church as family of God, and this is actually um, a contribution not only for the synodal process in the African continent, but also for the, for the global church. So work on this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, on that note, I'd like to thank everyone for participating and uh, sharing uh, during this session, which was, of course, of course, about the synod and communication. But perhaps before I hand over to Sister Dominica, perhaps a word or two, not uh, for a long time, Don Pochettino, but perhaps a word or two from you just uh, as we come to an end. A word from? From Bishop Constantino. Okay. Uh, Sheila, I'm uh, all right. It is already time and myself to go because I have a commitment, I have a personal visit, and I need to rush, you know. But anyway, uh, I want also myself to thank everybody. And I think that uh, this. Uh, this is uh, the beginning of uh, synodality, listening to each other. And how people say we need to promote these things also in our parishes, in our fam in the families also. I think that is a process, how the bishop said before, as the bishop said, it's a process that we need to go in, in uh, to have a conversion also among ourselves. Because uh, I, what I can say it is uh, we as communicator, we need to uh, to give much skills to our parish how to do the, this kind of uh, uh, path of synodality. And uh, I may think more in a rural area where I visit, we need people to listen more. I think that, that is good. And also I learned from here. And thank you everybody. Thank you, 
Natasa from Rome. I think we shall meet uh, there uh, in September. And uh, thank you very much, everybody. But I need to leave you. I need to go for personal with our work. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And on that note, I hand over to you, Sister Dominique. Thank you, Sheila. Um, for me, is uh, to say a big thank you for making this um, day and meeting a success. Thanking um, Sheila for putting everything, the, all the logistics, uh, as well as the gadget here, and for your willingness to set aside some time to build this solid, uh, solidarity and also solidarity here on our screen. And you have made it so colorful, how I would have loved to connect the faces as well as the names that are appearing on the screen. Before I would really ask uh, our Bishop Yahula uh, to bless us, that we see the faces as well as the names on the screen, if that is possible. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It has been very, very much informative and inspirational. Uh, you know, I find myself, you know, so encouraged to go back to uh, what I have read and what I have seen uh, or heard about synodality because it really challenges me as a person uh, to participate actively in my space. Uh, like we have heard also from Roland, you know, that this synodality spirit needs to really go into our own families to build us because that's where the church is. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much indeed. Could Baba uh, Dabula give us a, a blessing so that we go with this blessing wherever we go as we cross through media uh, the boundaries. Thank you. Good. <clears throat> Let us pray. <clears throat> Loving Father, we thank you for the sharing that has taken place among us. We ask that you'll send your Holy Spirit to continue working in us as we continue on this journey of this synod on synodality. Bless each and every one of us and give us the wisdom to see more clearly how to take this process forward. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sheila. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao.